Okay, so let's have a, a look now at framing. So we were looking just before at encoding, but how we can encode individual bits or groups of bits. Uh, now we want to start thinking about how we can actually uh, encode a, you know, to frame data to say, right, here is the start of some bits uh, that we want to send, and then we'll, we'll send those bits, and then how do we mark the end of those bits uh, to have that as a, a distinct uh, unit of information that can then be worked with. Uh, so at this low level, these are simply called frames of data, so not bit streams, um, but frames. The bit stream is what the physical link uh, is carrying, but now we want to move up above that and actually be able to have frames of data. Uh, so this is Ethernet. We talk about Ethernet frames for exactly this reason. Uh, and so it's the network adapter that's still responsible for doing this. So the network adapter is sending bits, they're encoded bits, and now it has to kind of you know mark where the, the ends of those uh, data frames are. So if we think about what's going to, to go on there, so node A wants to transmit a frame of data to node B. It tells its network adapter to transmit the frame of data from its memory. And that will necessarily cause some, you know, those bits to get sent uh, over the link. Uh, the adapter at the other end sees those bits coming in, pulls them all together, puts them into uh, a piece, recognizes the frame markers for the start and end of the frame, and goes, oh yes, this is a frame of data, uh, and then passes that back uh, to, the, um, uh, to the computer uh, to actually then process. And so that really is what the adapter has to do. It has to be able to encode the bits of data and to do this framing uh, function over that. Uh, so generally, uh, a lot of these uh, framing algorithms will be byte oriented because it's just kind of convenient to do. Uh, and so protocols for this uh, were developed uh, some quite quite some time back. So BiSync uh, was developed uh, in the, the early 1960s uh, and uh, DDCMP, so this is Digital Data's Communication Protocol. So this is a proprietary one that uh, they created as well uh, to meet uh, these kind of requirements. So again, if we think to what we were talking about with uh, the uh, the 4B, 5B coding, uh, this lets us have the, uh, the 16 data values uh, plus uh, some markers. So for example, uh, we can have a start of header uh, data link escape and a CRC, so cyclic redundancy check for error detection uh, marking, um, as well as actually uh, marking the frame by sending a special synchronized character that even if the the, the receiving adapter is hasn't lined up correctly in one of those five bit boundaries, that it can actually work out unambiguously that this is where data begins. So this is also a problem on floppy disk encoding and uh, hard disk encoding as well. Uh, where there are special synchronized characters that are encoded that can't occur in any other way and are uh, totally am unambiguous. Uh, and then we actually can have the, the start of text and end of text to mark uh, where the actual the data portion is contained. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six um, special markers in addition to the 16 uh, data values, uh, which again, if we're using a 4B, 5B encoding, uh, can work because there's enough uh, valid combinations uh, for that to work. So what we end up with then uh, for a bisync frame, so you've got the sync, sync, so you have the multiple syncs in case one of them isn't uh, correctly received, start of header, then you'll have the header, which might be some uh, fixed or variable length, uh, start of text, the variable length uh, uh, body of the um, uh, the data and then the end of text and then the CRC markers at the end that include this kind of checksum uh, for the uh, uh, for the frame. So yeah, this can work to um, uh, to solve uh, a bunch of these. So more recent examples. So PPP point to point protocol, which typically uh, was run so on modems uh, for quite some time, dial up modems. Again, you just had these streams of bytes coming through that the modem would provide, and you needed some way to work out where the ends of the uh, the data frames were. And so it would use a, um, a Sentinel character uh, to work out where the um, uh, each data frame would come. And then it would have some address and control information, protocol information, uh, the payload, 
uh, and check some. So you could carry multiple or, and, or indeed different protocols uh, simultaneously over a point-to-point -point, uh, protocol link. Uh, but again, it's satisfying the same fundamental need, turning uh, a bit stream or a byte stream into uh, a frame stream uh, for the next layer up. So for PPP, uh, we have that flag byte, we have the address and control and protocol information, again, variable length payload, we have a checksum, uh, and then the flag again at the end uh, to mark the end of that. Um, an alternative approach uh, was used by DDCMP. So if you think about all, of, if we go back to those slides and have a look, there's one, two, three, four, five um, markers involved in the process, and that consumes some number of bytes and therefore some fraction of the available bandwidth of the link. Um, we can save uh, bandwidth by instead counting how many data bytes uh, are actually in the frame and just send that count. The trouble is if the count gets corrupted, then you have a framing error. Uh, you can't reliably reconstruct uh, or receive the frame. So uh, as is often the case in uh, communications and therefore in networks, you can make trade-offs that may increase the, uh, the throughput or the bandwidth available uh, for data, but often at a, um, a trade-off against reliability uh, in the face of certain kinds of errors. And if you understand the kinds of errors that your link is likely to get, uh, you can make much more intelligent decisions uh, to maximize the effective bandwidth uh, that you can obtain. Um, and likewise, poor decisions will result in very poor performing networks, even though on paper they might look like they should be okay. Um, but if you don't protect against the most common error types, then you're going to have problems. Um, so DDCMP, if we have a look at uh, how that was structured. So you still had the synchronization markers because they were still needed. Uh, then we had the class and the count. Um, and then they had their header. And again, whilst the, very, the length of these fields can vary a little bit, the key is that the count can be shorter than the, all of those stop and start markers uh, and the uh, you know, that are otherwise needed. And so you can get slightly better efficiency, but as we said, in this particular case, if the count uh, field is corrupt, then you actually can't recover the, um, uh, the frame, or at least not without doing some fairly um, uh, brute force calculations. So if you suspect that the count was wrong, you could try every valid conceivable count and see if any of them satisfy the cyclic redundancy check value. Um, so this is quite feasible to do uh, on a low speed data link relative to your computing power. Uh, but uh, if the data link is fast relative to your computing time, so in the past, uh, that could have been still quite a slow link. Uh, now, of course, if you're talking something like gigabit, right, you wouldn't want to be having to check a thousand different variations on the packet length uh, every time that a gigabit frame comes in, or the, again, even a modern CPU is going to have trouble keeping up with that. So there's different approaches, and we'll come back to this one in the next video.